Dear Lana, welcome back to our lessons. My name is Mr. Wilfred Mumani Onkangi. My YouTube channel is Wilfred Mumani Onkangi hyphen Kiongozi, as you can see up there. Subscribe and let us learn together. We are now in the literature time for one. We have done the introduction to biology and the whole of it, and we are finished. Remember, we finished at the point of giving the differences between plants and animals. The reasons why we are doing all this is to prepare ourselves for the future, and the future is this chapter moving forward all the way to KCSE. Now, this chapter is classification one, and before I move to it and give you two objectives of our lesson today, I would want us to go through what we did last time. We talked about the differences between plants and animals, and maybe I can tabulate plants, animals, just to remind you, the differences that we talked about. And then we gave around five differences, whereby the first one was about uh, plants, most of them, most are uh, green. And we said, when we say that most plants are green, we mean that these plants can manufacture their own food, uh, and animals are non green. Non green, that means they cannot manufacture their own food, and so they will depend on the food that has been manufactured by these uh, plants. Although we have another category of plants, we have plants which are not green. We call them non green, and they depend on the process of uh, chemosynthesis. The green ones will depend on photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. While uh, the non green ones, plants that are non green, will depend on what we call chemosynthesis. But these ones will be discussed much, much in, 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 in details in the last chapter in Form 1. The second uh, difference was about uh, excretory structures. Plants have a uh, simple, simple excretory structures. They have simple excretory structures while animals have complex, they have complex excretory structures. So this is the second difference. I avoided, I, I, I discouraged saying plants do not have complex because that one is a negative statement. Number three is about irritability. We talked about plants being less irritable. In other words, we said they respond slowly to changes in the environment and so the difference between them and animals is animals are rapidly or highly, highly irritable. Highly irritable. This is what we are saying that plants respond quickly to changes in the environment. And we have the fourth one, which is about number four, is about um, talking about uh, manufacturing food. Uh, irritability, we talked about complex excretory structures, we can talk about movements. Plants move by growing, movement is by growing. Plants move by growing. Yeah, they, this is what we call localized movements. Localized movement while animals are uh, locomotes. Animals locomotes. That means they move from one point to another, and we also give reasons for locomotion. The last one is about growth. The last one is growth. While we say uh, plants grow at meristematic regions, meristematic regions, and these regions are the roots and the shoots. Growth occurs in two regions. These two regions, we call them the meristematic regions. While in animals, growth occurs all over the body. And I remember you were using a terminology, somatic body cells. Somatic body cells. This one, you will meet it when we talk about growth and development in form 4. That is basically what prepares you to now understanding plants and animals in that uh, order. So quickly now in our lesson today, 
we have two objectives. The first one is definition. We shall define definition of classification. And number two, we shall give the importance, importance of classification. Introduction to biology helps us to understand how to classify organisms. Classifying them or putting them in groups will be very, very crucial. This chapter is also not in form three, where now instead of classification one, it shall be classification two. That means a good foundation, a good basis in form one will give you easy time in form three when you revise or when you do classification two. Now, write with me the following notes. So we define classification, we define classification together, we write the following notes. Classification is the process, the process of grouping of organisms. You group organisms, the whole process of grouping of organisms according, according to their characteristics, characteristics. And you can use another term, features, features. Remember, organisms are going to be gotten from the environment. And for example, you want to study them. We have gone through the mechanism, I mean, it's a bit of process of uh, collection of specimens. We used apparatus and very specific apparatus for specific uh, organisms. You will collect them using the right apparatus or instruments, then bring them to the lab for what we call examination. To examine is to study. Reasons why you're doing the study or examination is to enable you to know whether or where you can group or sort them out. This is what we call sorting out. So you will know, when you look at the characteristics, because you've studied them, when you've examined those organisms, you'll be able to understand that these ones are grouped this way, these ones belong to this group, because of the features or the characteristics that you have discovered. So it is very important for you to understand that the apparatus that you used are very, very, very crucial in enabling you bring the organisms to the lab for examination. And once you've studied them, you know the characteristics, both physical and maybe you do detailed examination, you will be able to sort these organisms out. Majorly, organisms with similar characteristics, similar features, shall be grouped together. While those ones with different features are going to be separated from each other and put in different groups. That is the first objective. You define classification that is the process of grouping of organisms according to their characteristics. Some students go wrong. They define classification as the process of grouping organisms according to their similarities. So instead of saying features or characteristics they will say according to their similarities it is wrong because suppose they don't have similarities so it means they go wrong by bringing in similarities instead of the term features or characteristics let us go to the importance of classification importance of classification. Importance classification. So when we say importance, we mean significance. You can say significance or importance of classification. Why is classification important? 
And this question is very common in the exam. And actually, you'll be asked either you give three or four, even two points, all the same. Some students confuse themselves because of uh, maybe not having a uh, clear uh, uh, knowledge about this importance. And I would want us to put them in such a way that you'll be able to understand. We will give around four points and uh, write, write the following points. The first one, classification enables one. Classification enables one to bring together. To bring together. Bring or put. Bring together or put together organisms with similarities. Organisms with similarities. And separates. And separates those with different with different features. So organisms with similarities or similar features are put together where those ones that have different ones are separated. Number two, it also enables enables uh, place organisms place organisms place organisms into their correct groups into their correct correct groups correct groups for reference for reference so, if organisms are put in their correct groups, you can be able to refer to them. Maybe in future, maybe if you become a scientist or rather you become either a taxonomist or a botanist or whatever, you are supposed to refer to organisms and these organisms must be placed in correct groups. If you don't place them in correct groups, then confusion and so many problems will arise. You may not be able to do a good reference. Number four. Number three, rather, enables one to arrange information. Classification enables one to arrange information. Arrange information about living organisms. About living organisms. About living organisms. In an orderly manner, in an orderly manner, in an orderly manner, hence avoiding or to avoid confusion and chaos, to avoid confusion and chaos. Organisms or information about organisms has to be put in an orderly manner. And if you know or you understand classification very well, the whole process, you'll be able to arrange that information in an orderly manner, which is going to be very useful. And in that matter, you're not going to have confusion and chaos when you refer to that information about living organisms. The last one, number four. Last but not least. Last but not least, number four, classification enables, enables one to understand the evolutionary, evolutionary relationship between living organisms, between, between living organisms. The point here is evolutionary relationship. You are able to understand the origin of organisms and see whether they have similarities in terms of the ancestry or where they originated from. 
And briefly now, you should be in a position to write maybe two, three, or even all of them about maybe when you asked uh, the points to give the points in the exam, you should give them very easily. Number one was about bringing together, enabling one to bring together organisms with similarities and separate those ones with different features. Number two, placing organisms in their correct groups for reference. Number three, importance, enables one to arrange information about living organisms seen in another manner as avoiding what we call confusion and chaos. And finally, it helps. Classification enables one to understand evolutionary relationship between different organisms. That is about ancestry. The next lesson we shall look at what we call magnifying lens. This is something we looked at when we were collecting specimen. And so we shall look at these lenses and actually that lesson will be involved. We shall involve ourselves with the study of the handles. So I will keep on encouraging you to work with me and let us meet in our next lesson.